Good afternoon, Lace Chap, and I'm John. This is video. True Red, welcome to the season of Fallout 4, kicking off with Fallout 4 Lockdown. Because, okay, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Um, it turns out that writing an extremely long video essay on why Fallout 4 is actually really good took me a bit longer than I was expecting. Which does always happen, but it seems to take me by surprise every time nonetheless. But... Don't you worry, the season of Fallout 4 is beginning anyway, because uh, this here is a little challenge I've been wanting to look at for a very long time. So, okay, what is a Fallout 4 Lockdown? So, here's the thing about the Fallout universe. Radiation and disease, monsters that want to eat you, forced evolutionary virus, all of that good stuff. So, really... Does it make any sense whatsoever that, you know, the sole survivor would hop out of the vault, get back home, and then immediately think, you know what, I'm going off on an adventure into this nightmare future where everyone's dead? No, no it does not. You know what, I've got this island, looks pretty defensible to me. How about we just stay here? So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and never leave Sanctuary. And my goal is not just to survive, uh, but build a functioning society. Now, this is a fun little rule set that was kind of tinkered with a little bit just after Fallout 4 came out. But since then, there's been a couple of big changes. Number one, survival mode. So yeah, how well can you survive on this island uh, when, you know, you need to eat, drink, rest, and there's no real, you know, good source of uh, medicine, very little in the way of food, so uh, that's certainly a thing. And two, we got a whole bunch of DLC that added a whole bunch of toys uh, that could be uh, rather helpful. So, uh, okay, let's flip and go. Now, to make this happen, I'm gonna need to build pretty much the weirdest character I've ever put together. So, uh, strength, don't need any of that. Perception, I'd normally get by just fine without. Then we just bump up some endurance, bump up a hell of a lot of charisma, don't need intelligence for anything. Bump up my agility a tiny bit and a fair whack of luck. And that's... Yeah, that, that'll do. That's perfect for this incredibly weird task I'm undertaking. Right, on your way out of the vault, loot or don't whatever you want. Though I will recommend grabbing one thing in particular, which is uh, just after the uh, first ropes you run into... Uh, yeah, right here, there's a hot plate. Now, I know it looks a bit basic and rusty and whatever, but... This thing is a high-tech miracle, and you're really gonna be wanting that going forward. It's very important. You see a weirdly large number of things that seem pretty high-tech in this game. You break them down, they don't give you circuitry. The hot plate, for whatever reason, does. And it's pretty much the only circuitry in the entire beginning of the game. So, uh, yeah, don't leave that behind. And up we go back into the light, absolutely beautiful. Not gonna touch any of this, by the way. I feel like, yeah, you've got to be in the vault, you don't have a choice. Then we're gonna go in a straight line, straight to the island, and as soon as we cross that bridge, that's it. We're never allowed back over it or the bridge on the other side. And with this, here, we flip in, go. Absolutely magnificent. So, yeah, I'm gonna leave all that stuff up there. That feels a bit like, you know, not allowed, all right? The vault, because you have to be in the vault, and now, all I've got is uh, what's right here, which is... Uh, oh, that's gonna be good. Right, so, 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 so. Codsworth, I don't actually care about you, but you have a speech check for a bit of XP. Because the first thing we're gonna need is, yes, enough XP to level up. So, with Charisma of 8, this should be pretty much a guaranteed pass anyway. But, yeah, this one seems... Uh, it's a weird check. I swear you always pass it, regardless of your charisma, when normally yellow, you absolutely can fail at lower charisma. But this one seems to never fail for some reason. So, uh, I'll take that. Some lovely free XP. And there we go. Already almost a level 2. Now, we also need ourselves some, you know, food. And, uh, there are some creatures around here, but on survival mode with no armor, yeah, it's not exactly, uh... A good idea, so I'm gonna let Codsworth help me out with, uh, with the murder for a second. And we're just going to, uh, go over here. Because, yeah, one good shot, I'll put him down. But I would like Codsworth help just to, uh, you know, draw the... Codsworth, yep. Yeah. Codsworth, you're in the... Never mind, that's fair enough. Right, Codsworth, just wait there for a second. Uh, we need to get as much meat as we can before we, uh, move on here. All of this meat is gonna be, uh, critical. Alright, so there we go. Bloatflies hit really hard in survival mode when you're level 1. Like, ludicrously hard, in fact. So, uh, just be ready here. You're gonna let Codsworth take the lead, and... Uh, Codsworth, 
Okay, you know what? This is fine. Because I can just take a shot through the window. Number one goes down. There's some XP. I think I might have just been hit in vats, but it's fine. Yep, yeah, I have been hit in vats. I'm currently being hit with something. Codsworth is trying to uh, set that thing on fire. 50-50. See if we get lucky. There we go. I want to share in the, uh, the XP and uh, leveled up. One advantage to survival mode. Do, of course, get myself way, way, way more... Uh, XP. You do get leveled up XP. Good. Good, good, good. So, uh, just need to grab all of this. That is, uh, yes, yeah, six bloatfly meats and uh, also some money. This one out here was loaded. Love it. So, as you may have guessed, there's not going to be, you know, too much in the way of uh, opportunities to uh, gain XP or level up on this tiny, tiny island I'm now stuck on, which we've already cleared out most of the enemies of. So, uh, Okay, how are we going to level up? Because we're going to be needing to level up to access some good perks. Well, 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 well. Don't worry, I've been planning this. Intelligence 1 may be bad for your XP, but... Idio Savant makes you very, very good. In fact, yeah, Intelligence 1, first rank of Idio Savant. You can take that level 2, obviously. That should get me to the equivalent of... Uh, I think about Intelligence 8 or 9 on average overall, which is great. And I only need level 11 for the second rank, which is really, really early. At that point, you're like, I think you're like intelligence 12 or 13 overall. So uh, that there, that's pretty good. And yeah, we got ourselves a tiny bit of, uh, of food here. There's other food dotted about too. So uh, for the time being, I'm not going to starve to death. Just like, you know, check all the fridges. That's, that's an empty bottle, admittedly. Some of the other ones are better than that. Yes. Before we go any further, though, let's clear out uh, every single bad thing in this entire area. Because otherwise, uh, I get myself a little bit worried here. So yeah, we got ourselves a beautiful, beautiful uh, rad roach over there. So you can just go down. Another one's going to spawn in. I think he's actually not here. I think he comes out of the wall right there. There he is. And sometimes he gets himself... I hate it when he gets stuck in the pit. It's actually very effective rad roach armor. Okay, now he's come out. Good, 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 good. So take you down. Lovely. Another good thing about survival mode. I may die basically instantaneously. I need to eat and drink and whatever. But, yeah, the enemies are weaker along with me. It's much more of a uh, one-hit kill set of rules. Which means uh, those bloat flies are a nightmare. But on the plus side, uh, yeah, hang on. There's, there's one that's going to spawn in the street. But I can't remember what triggers him. So, just need to listen out for him. Is it going into this house? It might be going into this house. One of them's going to appear on the street sooner or later. But I can't remember what forces him to, uh, what forces him to spawn. So, okay. There's definitely, is it one or two in this house? And, uh, yeah, survival mode. I'm already flipping tight. Hello over there. Luckily, yeah. Even with a perception of one at this range, large enemy, basic 10 millimeter light weaponry, nothing too dangerous here. No, just the one, my mistake. Next up, crack open the safes. You can just, yeah, break them down when you're actually in build mode to get access to the stuff for free. But honestly, I may as well help myself to, you know, the XP from cracking them. Okay, handful of baked bloat flies. I'll keep me going for the time being. So yes, I've got food because, uh, okay, here's, uh, here's another problem I've got, by the way. This is going to be fun to deal with. I have to eat. Most food in this game gives you rads. The only food that doesn't give you rads is cooked meat. I have already killed and taken the meat from literally every living thing that will ever spawn on this island. Because now I've taken the workshop, nothing's ever gonna respawn. So, yeah. Um, that means I'm gonna be taking rads. Rads I can't get rid of because, hang on, do I even have a single rad away? Nope. Not one. Literally no way to get rid of rads. So, uh, slowly but surely, the rads are going to kill me. Okay, step two. Start tearing this place down because uh, I'm going to be needing myself, uh, yeah, resources. Lots of resources. Now, uh, there are a couple of tricks here, which is uh, some things give you better resources than others. Like, every single one of these lampposts, they give you a fuse and a broken light bulb. Now, that, that's copper. Copper is not the most common thing in the world. You're going to be wanting some giant piles of copper. That will not hurt you at all. Together with, yeah, just the fact that Sanctuary Hills is uh, swimming in basic resources. Steel and wood. Like, so much steel and wood, because basically every single tree can be... I think I just heard you spawn. Did I just hear you spawn? Hang on. 
Yes, I thought so. Is it tearing down the house that does it? I have no idea what causes you to spawn, my friend, but I know you do. Right, that there, that's the last rad roach that will ever exist. And it's not just the trees either. When it comes to, yeah, harvesting resources, uh, every single fence yields wood. It can all be broken down, so uh, we're going to be wanting all of this. Okay, as you can see, it's taken me an entire in-game day, but I think I've stripped... Okay, as I say that, I literally see some, uh, some fence. I... There's more fence in the background. Okay, there's a lot of stuff to strip in this damn place, but, like, I've got most of it. I've also located, this is fascinating, um, an invisible maple tree. It... It appears if I look up, and it is there, but it disappears if I... Bethesda, you never fail to surprise me. Right, we'll just take down the invisible tree as well. Okay, now I think with this tree down... Yeah, there was some hiding around the back here. That should be... With this tree down, that should be... There's some more stuff in there. Yep, good haul here, but in particular, almost a thousand steel and... What is... Wow, two thousand wood. That's... Yeah, there's a lot of trees and a lot of fences. So if you bother to strip mine literally everything, 2,000 wood. Now that, that's good. Because of course, I can convert materials straight into XP. Which we're going to be needing sooner or later. And even better, yeah, I've been a bit lucky here. Charisma plus two, always a useful item. And uh, the wig for a further charisma. Not too many hats give you charisma. So that's a lucky spawn because uh, I need myself some charisma. Oh yeah, now there's a person you'd trust. Alright, if that person said, hey, I'm setting up a new town, but also I'm terrified of the wasteland, would you like to come live with me? You'd say yes, damn it. Ah uh, yes, and that does remind me, don't forget that your special book, and that is going to be... I'm going to take one point of intelligence, alright, going up from one to two, because... Uh, I'm going to be needing that at some point. Don't you worry, I've got a plan in mind. So I am tired, I am hungry, I am thirsty. So let's get that sorted out. Now, back in the old days, we had to, you know, spend concrete and gears and steel making a water pump. But no, we don't need to do that in the sci-fi future of 2016, if I'm recording correctly. Because thanks to vault Tech, you can just build a sink for, you know, three steel. And you can slap it on any wall. Doesn't matter whether it's like, you know, hooked into anything, anything like that. No, no, don't worry about that. But I can just drink from that. And that is, um, that's purified water. I'm not sure it provides water to the, uh, the area though. No, the settlement officially does not have water. That's just, you know, something I can drink from. And speaking of vault tech, let's just slap down a very clean, nice vault tech bed. Because, yeah, the kind of the weird thing about the stuff that was added in by the DLC, they made it cheaper to buy than, like, you know, normal stuff. So I can spend only uh, three steel and two cloth to make what's clearly a, you know, nicer, cleaner bed. So that's nice. Okay, just eat my way through some pork and beans and whatever. Let's get myself back up to where I should be. Cram, that's normally good. Right. Properly fed, absolutely spectacular. Okay, that's day one. Good day of... John. John, 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 John. You might have missed a tray. And yes, I know about that one there. I can see it. Unfortunately, you can't take it down. Right, well rested. Nice early start at 5am. Looks like it's going to be not a rainy day at the bare minimum. And I'm not actually thirsty or hungry at all. Good, 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 good. So, right now, I've probably got enough supplies to live... Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll make it to about six days well fed, then I'll start starving, within ten days I'll die. So, you know, that's not good, we need to do better than that, and uh, the trick we're going to need to pull off is, uh, we need to get people into this settlement, because uh, there's all sorts of structures and things I can build uh, that people, settlers, are allowed to work on, but I can't work them. And also Codsworth can't, because he's a lazy bastard and also, I suppose, doesn't have, like, hands. So, uh, yes, unfortunately, we're going to need to get some people in. But the game doesn't really want you to get people in yet, because it wants you to go out and explore the world. And, you know, have to find some rare components that you shouldn't have access to yet. But, uh, there are ways and means. So, recruitment radio beacon to summon new people into my town. So, circuitry, two out of two. That's the hot plate from the vault. 
Copper, that's from all the street lights. Steel, no problem. Ceramic from the bathtubs. Rubber, there are tyres everywhere. So all we need is two crystal. Now this is the limiting factor. There is no guaranteed crystal in the vault, anywhere nearby to it, anywhere in Sanctuary Hills. It simply does not exist. But, 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 a little exploit was discovered very early on in Fallout 4's life. You see, this house over here, the person who lived here was prepared for the apocalypse, damn it. So, step one, if you just actually go up this here log, you can get onto his roof, where apparently he was just, you know, ready to uh, take down some fools that were trying to uh, storm his house or whatever. Very, very nice indeed. But, as he didn't have access to the vault, he simply made his own. A root cellar. Now, what we want to not do right now is go into it, because uh, that is technically a different cell to the one I'm in right now. So yeah, what's inside this cellar, right now the game doesn't know, because the game doesn't decide what's in random generic containers until you enter the same area that they exist in. When I go through the hatch, the game will make its mind up. So, if I don't like what I see, all I need to do is just, you know, reload. Now in survival mode, of course, you can't do that. You can only save when you're sleeping. So, it sure is bloody convenient that if I just stand right here, I am just inside the town. Meaning I can actually set a bed right here. Use that to drop a save point, nip down, see what's in the hole, and then basically keep reloading the cellar over and over until it's crystal. The microscope, the camera, or the decanter. Now, the chance of one of them showing up isn't great, because uh, Fallout 4 has uh, many items, so uh, this is gonna take me a while. Fortunately, thanks to the magic of editing, you don't need to sit through it. So, attempt number one. We nip down into this here cellar. All of this stuff on the shelf, that's guaranteed. What's in the first aid box, though, that's semi-randomized. So it's going to be something appropriate to a first aid box, but it might not always be Stimpak and purified water. But this yellow box right here, that's what we need. So right now it contains uh, literally nothing. Well, okay, it contains a Radex, but that's the most unremarkable thing in the world. Here we go, this time we've got a much better haul. So there's still one med item, but on top of that, we've got some other stuff too. So uh, Death Claw Hide just randomly here gives me a giant pile of leather. Meanwhile, the alarm clock, aluminium, glass, spring, nuclear material. Now, at this point in the game, aluminium's pretty rare. That's a pretty good drop, but it's not what I need. So uh, yes, now we begin reloading. Oh, I will consider myself lucky here. It's only been about... 10 minutes odd. This is maybe attempt number 20, I don't know, and there it is. Uh, the crystal liquor decanter. Spectacular. In fact, that actually gives me spare crystal, which I will never need, and uh, I get a rat away and a Molotov anyway. Okay, now that's a nice chest, thank you. Plus, you know, things like cram, very useful, just for, you know, keeping me alive uh, for the time being, just for the minute anyway. Not that that's the only valuable thing in here, by the way. Oh no, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, make sure you, uh, yeah, take these uh, gold bars and, uh, you're gonna be wanting to hold on to them. They're gonna be very useful down the line. Right, grab all that junk, dump it in here. But once we're done, uh, dumping all of that, yeah, I'm gonna recommend, uh, taking the gold straight back out again. Because the game considers a gold bar solid junk, which means it just sort of, uh, sits in here and eventually gets broken down for gold scrap, which uh, I'm going to recommend you don't do, because they've got a value of ridiculous on toast. So, one beautiful radio beacon, just to let people know, hey, we're here, maybe come and join us, could be a fun time. Does need power as well, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the easy bit, to be perfectly honest. So, uh, just slap down a small generator right next to you, right there, lovely. All right, while we wait for person number one to show up, yeah, now we need to make sure this place is uh, set up correctly. Because uh, technically, defense is uh, lower than it should be. Because, what do you mean two? Two? Have people, hang on, have people just sort of shown up? Are people, where are they? I'm not sure if that's me and Codsworth, it might be. Okay, there's a way to check this. Here we go, resources miscellaneous. The bell, give that a ring. Everyone who lives here 
comes to say hello, which is very useful in the, the bigger settlements where there's like a bunch of houses that you've got to. There you guys are! Right, is that actually the, uh, the lot of you, by the way? Yes, that'll be those two. So, uh, yeah, the thing about how uh, Settlers works is uh, you can have a maximum of 10 plus your charisma, I believe. So I could have uh, 18 here, but if the Settlers don't have jobs or happiness is too low, I think they... There's more I forgot to take apart, by the way. Then they won't do anything anymore. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now, you might be thinking, well, John, if your defense is too low, shove up some turrets. Yeah, fun thing about turrets. Every single turret needs uh, circuitry, which I don't have. Because the only circuitry in the world has just been spent on the actual uh, beacon. So, that's not gonna fly. Meaning, as a result of that, yeah, we need to slap up some guard towers. And this is... Uh, Right, that one's a bit on the cheaper side, uh, so we just need to, uh, yeah, set up a bit of uh, an outpost. Now, technically, one person can guard and manage, like, several of these, uh, so we're just going to create, like, a little uh, little bubble of them, and that there, that's Idio Savant triggering. Uh, so, yes, if you uh, manage to get yourself uh, more XP than you should do, that noise happens, which is very, very useful indeed. So, on average, I'm actually getting loads of XP at the moment, and... Wow, almost two in a row. Excellent. So, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Um, guys, guys, come back. So, now we just need to... John, you are already in build and manage mode. So, you, my friend, you appear to have... Yeah, you look kind of badass. You've got a leather jacket and everything. So, you now need to go over here. Because I need to not get attacked. And defense goes up to six. Good. Good, 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 good. So, unfortunately, I think he was uh, slightly out of range of uh, these ones. So, uh, yeah, it's only very immediate range. Okay, that'll do for the time being. And actually, thinking about it, I do need plenty of water production because uh, that's going to be more useful as time goes by. Oh, wow, I could build an industrial water purifier with signs of one. So, needs five power, but that's, um, that's a lot. Science. John, you can't do science, you're an idiot. Alright, basic water purifier it is. No problem, we've got a river right here. Plenty of resources, this is not difficult. Oil might become a problem at some point, mind. Okay, we'll go for the medium generator over here, because sooner or later, there we go. So now we've got plenty of water, now we just need food. Because, of course, a tiny bit of food does arrive with this settlement in the form of the melons. But if I just ate them, that would be, you know, bad. Basically, all food that comes out of the ground needs to be reinvested into making more food that comes out of the ground. So I harvested those two melons earlier. And now they can become... Excuse me. Excuse the flip out of me. Just, just, anytime you... Just, just be on the ground. There you go. That can just be more melons. Now, where's the other lads? I'm looking for someone who, uh, yes, you, my friend, appear to uh, not actually have, uh, you know, a leather jacket on. So, uh, your friend, the badass, he's going to protect us, uh, and you, uh, your job is to, uh, there we go, produce food. So, uh, we've got enough food for these guys to not consider themselves starving for the minutes. So, that's all absolutely fine. We've got the basics of an economy down right here. Just keep an eye on, by the way. It might not be more people till tomorrow. Because these two people now have jobs. Two people, two jobs, and also two beds. Why are there... Yes, there are two beds. The one I built in my house and the one over there. So, okay, those beds aren't for you, actually. Uh, we're going to need to make a little, little bunkhouse for the lot of you bastards. Okay, I'm feeling generous and I've got a thousand steel. So you can actually have, you know... Real beds. Alright, I'm going to put some beds dotted about. But um, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, purely for the sake of privacy, of course. And no other ulterior motive we're going to get to in a second. Uh, I'm going to split these beds up so everybody has their own private bedroom. And that gets me up to level 3 as well. Good. So we're starting to pick up a little bit of experience here. And on top of that, I'm currently uh, not hungry or thirsty. Better and better. Okay, obviously if we want a proper town, we need local leaders. So uh, let's get that started off right now. Now the next rank is at level 14. And that's kind of where we need to uh, where we need to go at this point. So yeah, that's um that's gonna be interesting. Luckily, as I say, I've got uh, I've got a plan for that. 
So, down over here, we've got a lovely big bit of open space, and uh, I've got plans uh, for a development right here. Say hello to the wooden post, and bloody hell, another person's already arrived. Right, they're arriving faster than I thought. So, the wooden post might not look like much, but actually, the wooden post is uh, pretty bloody incredible. You see, the wooden post, you may notice, only costs me two resources, and when I slap it down, I get 2 XP, meaning I can exchange resources one for one for XP, which you normally can't do. Basically, nothing else can do that. Like, if I just put down, say, a wire fence right here, so uh, 2 wood, 2 steel, that's... Okay, that was 9, but it was only 9, because then it happened again. <laughs> then it happened a third time. Okay, it didn't happen that time. Thank you, game. Because normally, a wire fence is only supposed to be, you know, 3 XP. It just got trebled by Idiot Savant. Yeah, we've got this interesting scenario where actually everything gives you less XP than the amount of resources you're putting in. But not good old post. No, post is amazing. We love post. In post, we trust. And as a result of that, we can just basically build every single post in the world, all right? If anyone asks, uh, this is just a new religion, I'm starting right now. So, all glory to his wonderful postiness. I've just got a Steam achievement, by the way. Something to do with building, I assume. Because normally, you don't build uh, quite this much. Uh, so we're doing, um, a lot of building. You're gonna get sick of that idiot savant noise. Uh, right, but let's not get, uh, distracted by that. We're still, we're still building posts. We're still building posts. You're probably thinking, wow, John, that's incredible. The fact that you've actually found an item that lets you exchange resources for XP one for one. Surely that's absolutely amazing. You couldn't possibly get any better. No, it gets much, much better because, of course, there's nothing to stop you taking the wood back. So in other words, I build two posts, that gets me, that noise is just gonna stack, it cues, by the way, it's just gonna, it's just gonna keep happening for, for some time. So uh, as a result of that, yes, I put down a post, 2 XP, put down two posts, 4 XP. Then I tear down both those posts and put up another post, and that is worth 6 XP, all of a sudden, of the same four wood. So, okay, stop, thank goodness. So... Admittedly, it's a bit slower to tear them down, but I got some good practice with all the trees, and speaking of which... Okay, one day, one day I'm gonna stop discovering more trees. Here we go, employee number three with a lovely, lovely hat. Right, what do we need you to do? Aha! I know precisely what we need you to do, my friend, because yes, there is a wonderful, wonderful thing that we need to get people working on. Here we go, resources at scavenging station. So we're going to set up a lovely scavenging station right over here. This is an item that, excuse me, excuse me, come back over here please, come back over here. You are going to start working right there. So what she's going to do is come over here and start going do 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 And then she's just going to invent a bit of junk. So yeah, right now the hard cap on junk doesn't exist anymore. Because new junk is just going to start being created, which is really good. And at the same time, yes, all of that surplus water I made, because we've got more water than we actually need to fulfill our settlers' needs at the minute, that is being shoveled straight over into my workshop, which is going to be potentially very useful. Though, uh, yeah, the problem's going to be food. Actually, there we go. So uh, she's doing the little blowtorch action. This is the animation they do when they're finding junk. Now, that doesn't really make sense. Like, is she, like, making junk? I don't know if she's, like, making junk fresh or something. Possibly she is. But if so, it would be called, like, a crafting station, not, you know, a scavenging station. But whatever. Everybody's got a job. We need to keep making more posts. Okay, sometime later, and a lot of noises queued up. Yeah, I've, um, I've built quite a few, uh, posts. That's got me to level 9, and I've started putting them into, you know, perfectly straight lines, because that'll make it easier to scrap them, which unfortunately I need to do, and that's, that's a lot slower, because I can take these down and then do the same again, and who are you and why? No, get out of the post! There's... Okay, I think one of my settlers might be about to get lost in post forest. Yes, good idea. I wouldn't, I just wouldn't even try going into post forest. Bad idea. 
Oh yes, that reminds me by the way, there is one thing I do need to do that's actually uh, very important. So uh, we have now got people arriving, what we need to do now is uh, try and encourage the right people to show up. Because uh, some people show up with Brahmin, some people don't. They're more likely to show up with Brahmin if there's facilities here for a Brahmin. Right, yes, yeah, so we're going to have uh, some lovely Brahmin. They can be right here. So now we've got that down, hopefully... Yeah, the, it's kind of glitching inside a plant. There we go, that's... I mean, it still kind of is, but it'll do, it's fine. So now, hopefully, Brahmin will start showing up. So, okay, that's good. So, yes, pole city over there. If anyone wants to take up pole dancing, we have got you set. However, you may have noticed that, yes, I've also got, like... A thousand steel. So we're going to need to do something with that too. And the best one for that is the toolbox as far as I'm aware. So yeah, that is again two resources and produces two XP. Though yeah, this thing's a bit weird which is they sort of stack. So if I just kind of basically do this, I can create a weird physics defying art exhibition. Which is certainly interesting. I think a rad storm's coming in. Right, if a rad storm starts up, because I don't really have much in the way of rad away, I might just want to uh, sleep through that. So luckily I am, you know, at a base. So I can just uh, sleep. There's level 10. But I would like to get up to level 11. Level 11 is the big one. Because as I say, level 14 is what? Level 14 is the actual big one. Okay, you know what? It's fine. I'll do this in a second. You guys keep working. I'm going to go sleep off the rad storm. Should last not more than two or three hours. In fact, you know what? It's 7pm, it'll be dark soon anyway. Let's say this has been a good day and sleep through to morning. Right, well rested as well, because aha, well rested gets me even more XP. Good, 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 good. Just need to take a quick sip from my magic sink that just produces purified water. Somehow. There we flip and go. And we can get straight back to building large numbers of toolboxes. Aha! Taken some down, put some more back up, and we've hit the critical level 11. Now this, this is an important flipping level. I've got, I've got eight level ups. Good, 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 good. Don't need any of them, but I do need Idiosavon rank 2. So now, all of a sudden, yeah, 5 XP, not 3 when I build. And Idiosavon 3 is pretty good, but that's not till level 34, so let's not even worry about that. And that leaves me three levels short of local leader. So, okay, now, now I can start leveling up faster. Also, I'm getting, uh, getting a bit hungry here. We're running, uh, we're running a bit low on the old uh, everything. But don't worry, don't you worry. Now we're starting to get, you know, infrastructure set up. Like, you know, the key forest of poles and whatnot. I've got a plan. Plus, as I've actually lined these guys up in a straight line, it's relatively fast to actually take them back down again. And that was an unnecessary bed. Might have got a bit click happy there. Okay, I've pulled down a bit of stuff. I've got some size back. And that means I can go over to the much more comfortable hammering A rather than hammering X. But now, now every time that Idiosavon triggers, I'm going to be getting times 5 XP, not times 3. So this over here, this is going to be much flipping easier going forwards. Oh yeah, I've still got 170 posts yet to make and I'm already up to level 12. So this is, this is a lot faster. Oh, there we go. We've got it. We've, we've used all the wood, all of the metal. Had to, you know, break it down in order to reforge it. But we've got plenty inside our terrifying monument. This is, this is just our new religion. Okay, so, 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 so. I've got 10 level ups. Don't really care about most of them. We'll get to them when the time is right. And now, local leader two. All right, this means we can start generating our own merchants because, okay, you're probably saying right now, John, why don't you just wait for Trash Kankala to show up? She's a merchant, that's much easier. Yeah, she's never coming. There are two triggers for her beginning to, you know, rotate around the world. One, you go and meet her, at which point she'll start rotating immediately. And two, you begin the quest Sanctuary. At that point, she'll start moving even if you've never met her before. So those are the two triggers. She will never come and find me. All right. If I want merchants, I've got to make my own. Now, of the available stores, the cheapest one is clothing. 
that's gonna cost me 200 caps. Now I've got 34, there's a couple of like, uh, cap stashes around Sanctuary Hill, so... Hello, you must be new by the way. Right, well that's, uh, that's just lovely. Welcome aboard. So, yes, how are we gonna get the remaining caps? Well, these people we've been inviting... Did you have anything you wanted me to do? Is there anything you want me to do? Yes, I'd, I'd like to trade with minutes. you, by the way. And when I say trade, I mean rob. So, we can have some money straight off this guy. And some food as well. Flippin' love it. Right, I'm just gonna go and see what else everybody else has got. Because, uh, yeah, I need basically all of the flipping money off everybody who works here. Oh, she was holding out on us. She had a flipping melon. Okay. A melon's good. Oh my goodness, the melons have come through. Yes, yes, well. yes. Spectacular. Okay. Now this, this is good news. This means more flipping melons. And food jumps up to five. Okay. That should hopefully incentivize people to show up. Admittedly, I'm not 100% sure about, you know, the rules. I know if too many people are unemployed, they won't come. I know that if population is too high, they won't come. I don't know what happiness and uh, supply of materials specifically does. And, ah, here we go. Yes, 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 yes. You brought a Brahmin. Now, Brahmins are very, very useful indeed, because Brahmins, uh, they're just going to start producing fertilizer and... Uh, Oh, that's going to be very useful down the line. That's why we built that stand. So it looks like, yeah, the average newcomer to town has somewhere in the range of 6 to 12 bottle caps on their person. So, okay. That means we're going to be needing quite a few people to show up in town. But John, I hear you cry. Hang on, we've got a problem. As people show up, the population's gonna go up and uh, you're not gonna be able to keep up with the food demands of that many people, meaning people are gonna stop coming and you even have enough food left in town to survive long enough for that many people to show up for you to actually be able to set up a store and get infrastructure going. To which I reply, oh, don't worry. I have actually got a genius plan that lets me solve every single one of those problems at the same time. For you see, if I just wait until it's, you know, uh, time for night, some of my settlers uh, decide they've deserved a good night's sleep, which is, uh, which is fine. And I absolutely encourage it, because uh, right now, we've got ourselves, yeah, a handful of settlers. Now, if there were less settlers, that would mean more new ones uh, would show up, because I've already drained these ones uh, of their cash, so... To be honest, they're kind of of limited use to me at this point. So, yeah, right now, it would kind of be better if the old settlers just sort of went away, making more room that will draw in new settlers, maybe two at a time, going forward. So, that's kind of what we need. We need somebody to guard the front door. We need somebody to farm. So, we need two. That's what we need. We definitely need two. Beyond that, we don't really. And uh, if we actually don't need, uh, yeah, them to be doing a job, and I can't help but notice there, I'm a tiny bit peckish. Well, waste not, want not. So here we go, Mr. Sandman, instantly kill a sleeping person, absolutely spectacular. And cannibal, feast on flesh to heal your wounds. But more importantly, yeah, it actually, you know, feeds me in survival modes. Now, I'll admit, I do still have some yum yum deviled eggs, but I don't really like deviled eggs, so would you mind just looking away for a second? If you work, you eat. It's as simple as that. That's true, but to be honest, sometimes you work, you get eaten. It's just, you know, it's the way of the world. It's sad, but there we go. So I'm now hidden. So now we just very, very, yep, there we go. He's now a bit on the, uh, bit on the dead side, which is fine. Could have his stuff if I wanted to. Don't really need it. I'm still nice and hidden. So now, as I'm a bit peckish, we just get in and... Oh, blimey, that's... Maybe we should have, like... Yeah, moved him off the bed first. Right, so we're just gonna take him... For a little bit of a jiggly, glitchy walk. Uh, don't, don't wake up. It's fine. 
don't worry, everything's under control. Alright, so, yep, here we go. We're just gonna, we're gonna follow good lockdown procedure here. Everything's a-okay. The important thing to remember during a lockdown is, of course... If you're planning to eat somebody, wash their hands first, all right? This lovely stream here, there we go. We're just gonna wash his hands and we'll just leave him here. Good, 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 good. We weren't drinking from this water anyway, all right? This is a separate stream to the one we're drawing our drinking water from. So, okay, that's good. That's good right there. Now, admittedly, oh, I'm a bit detected. There we go, not detected. Do we really need this woman? I don't think we do. Yeah, it would be better if we actually just, uh, you know, got some new people in. So, okay, we have learned a valuable lesson here. Just take her down to the stream here because I don't know where she's been. Then at that point, then we eat the corpse. Good, 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 good. That's how we should have done it. Now, admittedly, I'm now suffering from dark cravings, meaning... No form of food actually, you know, offers me any form of uh, sustenance aside from uh, human flesh. But that's fine, because we'll just hide the corpses down over there, and more people will be along tomorrow. Marvellous. Ooh, I've slightly developed uh, an illness, because yes, eating people isn't, uh, isn't that good for you. So, uh, insomnia. Not the worst thing in the world, uh, to be honest. That just means, you know, I'm not going to get as refreshed from sleeping, but... I can just sleep longer because now we're entering a period of sort of waiting for people to show up. Because yeah, we're down to uh, we're down to two people. No one seems too suspicious, and I quite like how he's assigned to you know knife and fork, which probably means he's a farmer, but could also you know theoretically apply all sorts of other things. Good, 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 good. I've basically just set up Andale. In fact, now we should be golden because uh, whenever I'm thirsty, I've got infinite water. All I need to do if I get hungry is eat one person because eating a single person completely fills up your hunger meter. It's the only food that does that, all right? People, as it turns out, good eating. So, uh, yeah, we just need to uh, kill a new person whenever they show up. So, uh, they show up, we steal the money from them, then we murder them, wash them in the stream, eat them. Sooner or later, we'll have enough money to actually get, you know, a shop going because that's the only shop we're allowed. And the other advantage, of course, of keeping the population down is, yeah, we don't need that much food, we don't need that much water or power. As a result of that, we're not going to be attacked. Though, there is another option, of course, just, just in theory. So, introduced by Nuka World, uh, cages. You can build cages uh, to actually, you know, capture people, if that's what you want to do. Now, plenty of this stuff I simply do not have, but, 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 raiders, a raider cage. So, all I need for that is, one, some power, and two, six jets. Now, that was more stuff I haven't broken down. Good, 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 good. Now, jet, I think we can actually produce. Fertilizer and plastics. Now, plastics, we got plenty of. Fertilizer, we should start just, you know, producing naturally over time. So I'm up to, yeah, four jets already, and I'm also getting more XP from that too, which is beautiful. So, yeah, all I need my little cow to do is uh, start producing a bit more in the way of fertilizer, which I think should now just be... Uh, coming in automatically and as a result of that we will be golden aha following morning brand new person rolls up with dear oh flipping dear only five bloody caps well that's just not okay i'm going to enjoy eating you also i have no idea whether this can retroactively work for containers i've already searched but as i'm swimming in perks i don't need for anything yeah let's get fortune finder up a little bit so Okay, I should now officially be finding more caps in... John, you already broke down all the containers. Yeah, I definitely broke down literally every container, right. Still, there might be some that have just spawned downstairs in the root cellar, potentially. Oh, but hang on. The safe. The safe we... we never opened. Okay, that's... that in theory could contain... How many level ups do I have right now? Do I have enough level ups for... I've got enough level ups for... Locksmith. 
Do I actually need anything else? I've already got the ability to eat people. Okay, that's great. Always good when you can eat people. Yeah, give it a go. All right, one, two, three, and then advanced locks. Now, okay, I'm... I'm betting a lot on this game. All right, this here, this is a container. I don't know whether whether or not it's got caps is decided when it's opened or when I enter the cell for the first time. And the answer is... Okay, there's literally no caps. Good, 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 good. I'm so glad I did this then. Lost track of how many blisters I got. Look, if you're trying to put me off, it's not going to work. I'm really hungry. I will eat around them. Also, I would just like it to be known, I don't like, you know, strip them naked for any particular reason. It's just, the game literally says she's too heavy to carry when she's wearing her gear, but when I take it off, at that point, I can carry her down to my corpse pile. So, that's the only reason. It's nothing weird, okay? This is perfectly wholesome cannibalism. Right, down to the water. Just, just give her a quick rinse. Honestly, don't bother, like, scrubbing or anything. I'm really hungry. Uh, so down you go, and uh, there we flip in. Marvellous. Right, 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 right. So, that should be me now full up. Ah, oh, marvellous. Succumb to a dark craving. I'll admit I did yes. Great, now I'm infected. Well, I do have antibiotics, or we could just sleep it off. Yeah, sleep it off. I'll just let some people arrive in town anyway. I just, uh, I just want to trade a few things. Of course. I like how Captain Bad Ideas sounds so completely unconvincing. Like, uh, yeah, she, uh... She knows she's lying, actually. She knows she's got dark designs. Got a dangerous look about you. Hope you ain't here for me. I think that might be starting to catch on. Okay, some time has passed. Lot of people are dead. Corpse Mountain getting a bit out of hand down over there. But we've done it. We've finally done it. I've picked up a lot of diseases off the various people. I've eaten, by the way. Like, in some ways, eating people that come in from the outside world feels kind of counter to, you know, the ethos of lockdown. But, in the end, it's all been flipping worth it because... Uh, well, okay, admittedly, we've got one problem, which is... I've had to eat so many people, we are still at only two. Which means there's nobody to, you know, man the shop unless... You guys don't need food that much, right? Oh, there it is. We are going to have ourselves one clothing stand. We won't have food, but we'll have clothing. Oh, this is, this is beautiful. Right, you, my friend, sorry, but we can't actually have food anymore. So, advantages of a store. One, makes the town happier. Hopefully meaning more people will show up because I feel like some people are starting to, you know, spread the message around that settlers keep coming here and then disappearing and never being heard from again. So possibly the number of murders is slowing down town expansion, I'm not sure. But two, this thing also passively generates income. I'm not sure how, but presumably Jim over there by the door is just buying a lot of clothing. And three, it means there's now a shop in town. Because the weird thing is, despite the fact I only invested 200 caps into, you know, making this shop a thing, He's now got 400 caps, and uh, I'm not 100% sure why, but he does. Ah, yes, and remember those gold bars we picked up earlier? Yeah, single one of them, we can pretty much clear out his money. And then even more weirdly, he's got enough money on him, even though I only invested 200 caps. I guess we're just, like, robbing him of his life savings right now. So, yes, we can now set up a bigger, more advanced clothing shop using... Uh, the money that was just generated. So, now we break down the old clothing shop. Alright, no, 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 we need you to... Okay, you, you my friend, you are now going to go over to this clothing shop. There you go. So you go over there, we break down this, we get a hundred of our caps back regardless. He's now got an even bigger, better shop going on. This is so weird that this works, but it works, so whatever. And the very next flipping day, yep, 100 caps have just been dumped in my inventory. And give it a couple of days, he'll manage to get himself, yes, some lovely, lovely new money in. 500 new caps immediately. Just took, I think that was a day and a half. And with that giant pile of money, we can start having a bit of variety. Then I literally just move him to, you know, whatever shop I need him to be stocking. So if I needed generic junk, just general trader right there, but, 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 okay. 
I think I've realised uh, that, yes, the actual cannibal trap town, people are starting to get suspicious. So, uh, it's time for us to, you know, move on to a better footing going forwards. Right, a few thousand more containers over here. We get ourselves a new perk points. Because with Medit 1 and Local Leader 2, I get myself First Aid Station 1. Spectacular. So, okay. Okay, okay, okay. My friend, I'm going to be honest, don't need any clothes today. So what you're going to do is pretend to be a doctor. This is... This would probably be worrying if you came into town and asked to see the doctor and just, you know, someone from a different shop said, Oh yeah, that's just me as well. I just got to do both. Not many doctors around these days. You should let me take a look at you. Okay, you don't have to do the lying sales pitch to me. I know you're not a doctor. I'm gonna be honest, I was hoping for a dick toll. Because if I could just get some a dick toll, then, yeah, I could, um, get rid of this dark hunger that compels me to eat people. Because I feel like this is being bad for the town's reputation, actually. Actually, that's true. If I say cure, does that include, uh, yeah, addictions? Aha! Dark craving, 75. Good, 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 good. We can do that. Do I even have 75 caps? I'm not sure what he's actually doing. Okay, she's just injecting the cannibal out of me. That's, that's good. Oh, that's God. really good. Any other complaints? No, I feel much better. Thank you. Oh, you see, now we're getting somewhere. I literally only just got over cannibalism. And after a couple of days when nobody showed up, this guy immediately appeared. So, welcome aboard. Thanks for getting to work on the vegetables. We did need somebody to be uh, doing that. Yes, very, very welcome indeed. Uh, yeah, I think we need to... Uh, we need to do a bit of PR. There we go. Not cannibal anymore. Absolutely beautiful. Doesn't matter whether they arrive during the day or at night. They are now going to know we are no longer cannibals. 100% safe. But John, I hear you cry. If you're not a cannibal anymore, there still isn't enough food to, you know, survive. Well, that's where you're wrong. Thanks to Nuka World and the Cages, yes, Mole Rat. We can just generate huge amounts of Mole Rat. And the best place to generate it would be right here. Right next to the guy who's, you know, got a gun. If people see, yes, I know how cages work, thank you. If people see that we're catching, you know, mole rats, then they'll know we're not eating people. Because these clearly aren't people traps, they're not big enough. And on top of that, we are still overproducing food. Overproduced food means, yeah, we're going to have ourselves a, a big pile of leftover stuff right here. So, uh, spare melons, uh, spare water, spare everything. And if need be, I can just sell the overproduced water back to my own store. Because... They will buy water from their own settlement for no particularly good reason. So, yep, these here melons, they'll keep me going. Absolutely lovely. Still peckish. Two melons should bring me up a level. And now, properly fed. Still a bit sick, mind you, which is, you know, a bit of a shame. But what can you do, eh? Now, now we just wait till tomorrow. And hopefully we'll have a better day. And if we're lucky, we might have some fresh breakfast that's wandered into camp. Okay, we got double good news here, which is, yes, the clothing store keeps making flipping money. And the money I can use to just make more stores. So as a result of that, how about we now get ourselves a food and drink store? Flipping love it. Can't afford the really good bar, but can get you, you know, a nice place to grab a drink. Not sure if that's actually going to have food or not, but okay, you, my friend, go over there. And now pretend you're a bartender, just for a moment. Oh no, he's selling actual food. We got ourselves crispy squirrel bits. Definitely haven't seen them before. Mongrel dog meat. There has never been a dog on this island. So uh, he is now shipping in fresh food. Absolutely love it. So I've now got myself a source of meat that I can just buy. And if I run low on money, well, I can just use water from my own settlement in order to pay him for the food he's just sort of getting from somewhere. And if I do have any problem with rads, uh, I've got a doctor. I can just pay him 40 caps to get rid of the rads. And 40 caps I can easily make by selling him basically his own water. And on top of that, I don't even need his meat because uh, we have got a constant supply of fresh flipping mole rats. Admittedly, it would have been better if we had like, you know, a proper, 
proper switch here, so we'll just go to- There we go! Oh, bloody hell, it's like a glowing one! Um, could you- could you help deal with that? This is- this is tougher than I was expecting. Oh, he's gone underground because he's a mole rat and that's what they do. Uh, does anyone know bloody hell what is he? He's- Okay, just- just put everything into his- put everything into his- Why are you missing with all the shots? Oh, I'm about to die to a mole rat. This is embarrassing! Bloody hell, we took him out. Okay, this is- Right, maybe next time- we- yes, maybe next time before we open them, we get Codsworth to go over there. Because that was- that was interesting. And also- Okay, he did drop one meat. He did drop one meat at least. It's, you know, probably slightly irradiated meat, but that's fine. Just helped myself to the crispy squirrel bits and the cooked mutt meat for the time being. And uh, there we go. I am now completely 100% fed. So- Okay, I've got infinite supply of free water. We have got more than enough food. If I ever need to, like, you know, dip into the local supplies, there are now, yeah, there's just 10 million melons just sitting around. So I could just eat those melons. There will be a few rads in the melons, but if there are rads in the melons, then I just use the overflow water, which seems to be constantly just piling in to this damn thing in order to, you know, pay this guy when he's pretending to be a doctor to heal my rads uh, for only 40 rads. So I've got effectively infinite free Radaway because, uh, yeah, actually, he's better than Radaway because uh, he doesn't actually cause any problems with my uh, immunity or whatnot. So, okay, rads aren't a problem anymore. Food's not a problem. Water's not a problem. Obviously, I've got a bed, so that's not an issue. So uh, we've done it. We are sustainable without ever leaving Sanctuary Hills. Not only have I managed to survive, I've set up a sustainable community, which admittedly is built on a foundation of corpses that are probably still down over there by the river, but I'm sure it's a-okay. Now, we are no longer cannibal. I have put up a sign so that everybody knows it, and there's probably, like, you know, a son or a baby or something I'm supposed to rescue. I forget, but, like, the point is... <laughs> I've rather enjoyed this. It's been trickier than I thought it was going to be, especially getting together that first 200 caps. Yeah, we've managed to now get ourselves a, a working town. This is... This is so much fun. People seem to miss this a lot, by the way. A lot of people seem to just think, you know, the, uh, the settlement building in Fallout 4 is just because it's nice to build, or people who like, you know, building things. It's just, you know, a nice little building system. But it is actually very useful, especially in survival mode, where you can actually make towns that are more effective at keeping you fed and watered and rest and healthy than, you know, giving yourself first aid out in the field. Because having your own doctor ready to go at any settlement of your choosing, that's... That's really bloody powerful. In fact, you know what? I might well have to use some of these tactics when we do Fallout 4 You Only Live Once, which is coming very, very soon indeed. But not before Fallout 4 is better than you think, which is coming... I know it's supposed to be today. It's coming next week. A promise. Like, I've done almost all the work on it. I just need to uh, pull it all together. It's so good, by the way. I'm so happy with it. So uh, hopefully you join me next week for that. And hopefully you've enjoyed our odd little adventure here today with Captain Bad Ideas, who finally, as it turns out, came up with a good idea, which is stop eating people, and maybe that'll be for the better of the town. Also, I just waited two hours so it was sunny for the outro because it was a bit miserable. There we go. That's happier because the season of Fallout 4 has indeed now begun, ladies and gentlemen. It is nothing but Fallout 4 every Sunday for quite some flipping time to come. So hopefully you are looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout 4 The Lockdown Run. Thank you very much and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes! My stupid, stupid plan has worked! It turns out I'm a genius! The giant rat scorpion is not gone! Oh, hang on, there's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.